How we met. Bazario Mwanza. Sife Mwanza. We met in Dola. Yeah, at the studio. She came over to record some songs and yeah, that's how we met. How we met. Hi, this is John Mumba. Chile Shabwale Mumba. Well, we met at church 2013. It's an interesting it's an story. Interesting story. How we met on Lifestyle. Go ahead. My name is Jane Zulu, now Jane Zulu Siwale. <laughs> and my name is Nathan Siwale. How did we meet? Um, I've, I would like to say we are the couple that met at the right time. We, we, we surrounded ourselves with, uh, with uh, people that know us both, but we just never got to meet. We were in the same circles, we went to big concerts together, small concerts. We went to everywhere. Her people are my people, but we just never got to meet. So it had to take someone to introduce us to one another. And well, the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was single for, for a while and uh, I couldn't just, I was not looking. I was looking to push my career and I was working. I just um, signed my contract with where I'm working now, so I was much more pushing for that. Then um, the person that introduced us, uh, as he said, was uh, a mutual friend. I met mm. her at um, Elizabeth Mwanza's uh, kitchen party. I think people must know she 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 used to sing. Uh, so we met at a kitchen party of her friends. Then from there we we became friends. So she sings with him in Tribe of Judah. And so we kicked it off. <laughs> yeah, so we kicked it off with her. She became a very good friend. Mm. I managed Rachel, so we, like you said, we are in the same, the same circles. So she called me and said, "Oh, I found a husband for you." I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and then uh, she called him and said, "Oh, I found a wife My for wife. you." Uh, yeah. <laughs> then she said, "Okay, I'm sending. I'm giving him his number. I'm giving him your number, and he will he will call you." Yes. Yeah, so. Basically, that's how it made. It was a hookup. <laughs> My first impression when I saw her, I remember. I can remember the the day very well. I was sitting in the car, and then I parked it at the churchyard, and um, she was coming out from the house, and 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 I saw her through the the, the side mirror, and I said, "Hmm, <laughs> just hmm, hmm. really." <laughs> That's a pretty lady coming there. But then uh, I think at the time we, at the place I was at, I was not at the place uh, like like the question you had asked before, you had asked her before about whether she was looking for love and whatnot. I wasn't at the time. I was just like, okay, friendships. We're just making friends here. That's that's all we are doing. And uh, when when I got to speak to her, my first impression was this is a serious person very focused person the way they spoke and the way they they presented themselves she's very what you get what you see is what you get she's she's not the type of a person who will give you some particular side and want to act a certain way she's very very straight i think even the pastor who married us said the same thing said if she does not agree with you about something she will just tell you up front so yeah of course definitely <laughs> And and I think Don't one of the <laughs> one of the things that I found interesting was um, his name. So I was like, oh gosh, his name oh is J uh, is Nathan, whom Jesus loves, Siwade. So for me and my young sister, my young sister who is a Facebook FBI, <laughs> was like, this name sounds a bit. Weird. <laughs> it was not cool at all. It sounded like those typical church church boys. So I'm like, oh, this must be interesting. <laughs> this must be interesting. So oh, definitely, I, I did. My first impression of him was, wow, he's tall. <laughs> and uh, he did not come out to open the door for me. I 
Gotcha. So I am a girl, a girly girl, <laughs> who likes to be treated like one. So I waited outside until he came to open the door. So when he came out, he was this tall human being just, just there. And yeah, he's very particular. You can see it even the way he wears his glasses. So yeah, it went on noticing the tallness and the particularness that he carries around. How how the proposal went? Uh, the people I've told so far about this uh, find it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know whether to use the word cliche or something. Yeah. And say, oh, okay, so people still do that. Like, uh, will you be my boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened is um, uh, the person that introduced us to each other, uh, Deborah, aka Didi, famous Didi, famous who was Didi, our matron, who was our matron <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, her and her husband. Um, a lovely couple there uh, invited us to go to Siavonga with them. So we traveled to Siavonga and I had actually planned that that's where I was going to speak to her. So she always tells me that I tricked her because I officially asked you her. Me. I, I didn't, baby. You me. I officially asked her uh, to, to get into a relationship with me at the beach and then there was the sunset happening so you she claimed I couldn't, she couldn't say, say no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect it was a boat so, cruise and the sunset <laughs> and the sun and the waters who can say no <laughs> so basically yeah that's 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 where I asked her to be in a relationship with me yeah. uh, I think we had done one of those where we visit the mall and we randomly check for mm. ring sizes or something like that. And then um, him and Didi were in cahoots again. This time they told me Didi was a matron somewhere. So they wanted us to see uh, the wedding or whatever it was. And then we we, we did it. Um, we He brought the plates first before before the, the ring came. So she was say, he was saying, we need to see since there's COVID and let's see how the weddings are now happening with, in this pandemic and all. So Didi was the matron. So he, he, was, he was coming from work. I don't even know if he was coming from work or he was lying, but from my end, he was coming from work. Then he was picking me up. Then we were going to go to, to pick up Didi, then, then go for the oh, wedding. Really? <clears throat> yes. So he had left me. Uh, he dumped, ditched me at his house. And then left and went. He says, I'm coming very soon. We are going to go. So I was there. I waited, I think, a couple of hours. I was so mad. I was so hungry. <laughs> I told him to stop somewhere to get me food. He did not. So he just came I'm back sorry. apologizing. I was so mad. I, I didn't even want to, to go for the wedding. I was just like, whatever, let's get, let's get this on and over and done with. So when he came to pick me up, uh, we went to Didi's house to pick her up. And then, uh, funny enough, he was roaming around the yard pretending to be speaking to someone on the phone and he told me to drive. So I was driving and I was just not interested anymore. I was taking long to wear my shoes and what and get out of the car and he was just wondering <laughs> what was taking so long. I was just over it. So when I got in, there was just petals and flowers and everyone else. And he knows I'm very sentimental. So every every person who was close to my heart was there. My best friends, um, my sister, my family, our friends. So it was it was interesting. Arranging the engagement, um, it was it was interesting, um, nerve wracking. I must say, um, you know, you've already done the plates arrangements, so you already know what's what's happening. But the actual, you know, kneeling and and, and asking, you know, it it, it was nerve wracking. I remember, uh, Didi was very helpful. 
uh, we set up the place uh, that day was quite busy I needed to make sure she That's could not sus you know be, uh, uh, you know be suspicious of anything at all so when I took her home I ensured that she she had a bit of company my housemate at the time uh, Emmanuel was there so at the time that we were leaving now when I came to pick her up and we were leaving so I told him say, okay this is what's going on and so he just laughed said, ah, she looks upset I said yeah well she is I'm, I'm quite sure she is but it was very interesting uh, a good experience and, and eventually we got there and I got to go on one knee and it, it was also surreal because you know these are things you just watch and see other people doing and then now finally we're here yeah I said no for she fun. Said that, no. <laughs> yes, I did say yes. Yeah, I said a little no, but I said yes. <laughs> it's a very touchy my story. <laughs> my dress. <laughs> Oh my gosh, my dress. Oh. <laughs> That's what there, I there, to baby, start there, there. <laughs> But it was really touchy for me. Um, mm. It was locally made uh, by a wonderful, wonderful woman. Uh, she's from Mo Creations. I think she walked me through everything till, till, till when, when we collected it. I think I changed the design twice or three times. I'm not even sure. Yeah, but then mm. she 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 wanted something that was me, not something that was thought out from from whatever from a picture or whatever. But she she wanted something that will come from from me, and I think that's what that's what we got. It was simple and elegant. So she's yeah, more creations did my dress, mm -hmm. local designer. Jane walking down the aisle. It was very emotional. Um, Jane says I'm not, I'm not emotional, but I am. <laughs> well, well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was very emotional because uh, when she was walking down the aisle, she wasn't just with her father alone. She was with her mother as well. And uh, they were walking towards myself and my parents because my parents also uh, were there standing Uh, waiting to receive her and um, just seeing her there coming she was looking so beautiful I have never seen her look that beautiful I don't think I've ever seen you look that mm. beautiful she walked in and it was just an amazing moment I could not believe it was happening I was thinking somebody pinch me now like, <laughs> pinch me now and it was it was an amazing experience and uh, something I could do again yeah No, I walked in with a saxophone. So my brother, my lovely brother Lazarus, um, from the elect family, um, organized someone called Hudson. He played the saxophone for me to walk down. Yeah. So I walked with the saxophone. The entrance to the reception the at the wedding. Um, first of all, I must say that it was her idea. Yay! Uh, Thank she you came for the up, credits. <laughs> welcome, baby. <laughs> she came up with the idea, um, and and it was just brilliant. We we did we did rehearsals uh, with the group and and whatnot, and we just we just what we wanted was just a Holy Ghost party. We just <laughs> wanted a party at the wedding, and uh, we thank God that that's what happened. And we had a we had a great time. We we sang two songs we did a medley of of two songs that was uh Demi Totila by Pride uh Priestley I hope I keep on not pronouncing that name correctly but yeah Demi Totila and uh, we did Onaga by um JJ Heston and who Timmy Tim Joffrey yes I think. so those are the two songs that we did um 
the Holy Ghost party. <laughs> we watched the video right in the beginning. I was nervous. And originally, I was supposed to start. So I was getting cold feet in the beginning. So I said, I can't, I can't start. You <laughs> have to start. <laughs> so he, he started it. And, and and thanks to our bridal party for holding us down. They backed. So everyone on the bridal, almost everyone uh, sings. So they, they held us down as well. How do we resolve conflicts? Conflict is, is, a, is a big, big, big topic, big issue. And we thank God for the counselors that we went through. And they really took us through this and taught us how that conflicts are something you cannot run away from. They, they will always be there for as long as two people are coming from two different backgrounds. And also for the fact that it's a man and a woman. Right there, you know that there are differences in the way you think, the way you resolve things. So um, one of the things that uh, I constantly remember is you are not fighting each other. You are against the problem, not each other. And it's the two of you against the problem. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that has really helped to be able to see that whenever there's any difference in the, any conflict, we're able to resolve it in a way where we say, okay, what is the problem? Let's deal with the problem so that we stay winning together. So conflict, <laughs> you gave a very technical answer. Um, so we talk, I think, uh, we address we address it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, basically communication is, is even to try and not to run away from it, uh, to try and mm -hmm. stay in the clear, to avoid um, hurting the other person mm -hmm. is we talk about we talk about things and resolve them away. Mm -hmm. So we, we talk. Mm -hmm. What do I appreciate about Jane? Wow. Um, <laughs> Jane, Jane. Jane is a very hardworking person, very focused, loves the Lord. I think these are, these are some of the things, uh, the, uh, some of the main things that got me to a point of saying, I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Because when I, when I look at the person that I wanted to, uh, when I, when the person I wanted to be with is one who, who loves the Lord, who loves ministry, loves people, and uh, loves to serve in the kingdom, and um, uh, has a vision, has a, a plan for their lives going somewhere, and they push at their hard worker. And Jane is that. She's just that. What do I appreciate about him? <coughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do I appreciate about him? I think firstly, before we even got into a relationship, I wanted to marry not just a church goer, but a Christian. And I think I appreciate Nathan for that. He is a Christian. He will um, call you out. He's not going to compromise on the word of God. He will tell you what it is, um, what he thinks, uh, the word, not what he thinks, what the word of God says. So I think he's not one to condone I didn't go to church because I was washing, and I think I appreciate that. I, I, <laughs> not that I would stay home to <laughs> say I was washing and I'm not go to church, but I think he's he's one that I know would 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 lead our family in that direction. One other thing is um, his work ethic is above and beyond. I think I admire that. I, even for my own career, I think I, I admire that about him. His work ethic is is to the T. And um, what else? He's a good leader too. Uh, he, when we met, he was a deacon in his church. I was serving as youth director at my church. So yeah, I think from that, I think he's he's a great leader. So those are some of the things I appreciate about him. Yeah. Do who 
hookups work? Um, I think they they do. Uh, basically, the way things went with us is that uh, we were basically uh, introduced to one another, and from there on, it was now our responsibility on how we we're going to run with the relation, or, or rather, how we we're going to run with with that introduction. Um, one of the things about Jane is she's she's very straight. She's not the type of person who will present something she's not. And 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 that's one of the uh, most important things. We were very real to one another. We we spoke who we really are and showed who we really are. And we did not, you know, pretend and want to look a certain way. We we were just very open with one another, straight with one another. And 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 I'm so glad that we got to finally meet where the couple that just never met. We, we, we were supposed to have met earlier, way earlier than now. And I'm pretty sure that if we had met earlier than the time that we did, <laughs> we probably would not even be married right now, sure. to be honest, because uh, with the discussions we both had of the places, <clears throat> excuse me, the places that we were at at the time would not have been conducive for each other. Yeah. We were practically being built for for each other and when we met we met at the right time yeah uh, does love still exist for someone who's been looking for love yes uh, i think i i am a, a living testimony of that where you you you've been through heartbreaks and whatever that was going on before and god presents you this uh, I think in the time of waiting to really trust in God and not to want mm. to settle for less, there is usually the, the temptation to want to just, ah, you know what, this is what's there, so let me just settle for this. But mm. to keep on pushing and, and trusting in God. Serve him. Um, don't serve because you want the man, but just serve him because you love him. Uh, and God is faithful enough to 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 give you um, that. I, I think marriage is God's idea, and God is the one that blesses people with marriages. So continue serving God. Uh, continue trusting in Him and being faithful. Um, everything happens. Everything happens at its beautiful appointed time. So not all lo- hope is lost. Uh, God is still faithful. God is still on the throne, and love happens. When you least expect it. Does love exist? Love most definitely exists. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, God rest is so, um, Dr. Mars Monroe said in um, a lot of his sermons, I've, I've, he's influenced a lot of my, my view about marriage and love. And uh, one of the things that he say, said is, um, he was talking to the, to the ladies and he was saying, he should find you in the kingdom he should find you in the kingdom and for me that means you're at a point where you're wondering whether love exists continue serving the lord continue working as you're working you may be an usher you may be uh, an instrumentalist you may be uh, uh, you know in the praise team (laughs) (laughs) you may be you may be in the (laughs) choir and doing what you're doing continue doing that i promise you that before you realize it it's going to be right there and love must definitely exist. Look at us. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. us. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>